Today on Timescast, newly revealed emails show White House concern for Solyndra's financial health before President Obama's visit. American Amanda Knox is freed after her murder conviction in Italy is overturned. And Latinos vacate Alabama schools and farms as the state's tough new immigration law goes into effect. So today, the investigation into Solyndra, the California solar equipment manufacturer, opened much wider as a result of more than 600 pages worth of emails that were written at the White House and the Department of Energy that, that show even further disputes over the management of this program. What the emails show is that there really was a dispute within the White House over the whole loan program, which has given out $16 billion, that there were people in the Office of Management Budget, which is part of the White House, who felt as if the Department of Energy was doing a really terrible job of overseeing this money and that maybe money would be wasted and that Solyndra was just an example of the bad loans that were being given out. And there was a debate in the White House as to whether or not to terminate the program altogether. It was so bad that, in fact, a Solyndra investor wrote Larry Summers, then an economic advisor in the White House, to say, why are you giving us this money? It, it seems like it's good for us, but bad for the government. Clearly, this is now going to be fodder for Republicans during future hearings on Capitol Hill to criticize the Obama Department stimulus program. And um, it also is going to raise questions about whether or not how many other companies out there that have gotten loan guarantees, you know, perhaps were bad bets. And already, you know, there's, there's evidence that a, a Nevada company that is a geothermal um, explorer is going, perhaps soon going to default on its debt. And, and the question will only, you know, grow deeper. Are, are there other Solyndras out there? She's free. She is free. I was outside the courthouse just a few minutes ago in Perugia, and where a large crowd of mostly young people have, have been gathering for the past half hours. We've just heard the news that Amanda Knox has been acquitted on charges of having murdered her roommate four years ago. Inside the courtroom, there were tears and a uh, few whoops of joy. Outside the courtroom, it was a much more tense situation where hundreds of young Perugia students and, and uh, gathered to um, and and called out for shame, for shame. I think they were looking for Amanda Knox and Rafaele Sulecita, who had just been acquitted of the murder of 21-year-old Meredith Kircher. Uh, we've been told that they could be released as early as tonight. I think it's a little early to tell how Italian, what the Italian reactions will be. I think tomorrow's papers will uh, be full of questions about whether the Italian legal system has somehow fallen under uh, observation and has found to be failing. This is Campbell Robertson uh, for the New York Times. Uh, last week in Alabama, a federal judge uh, upheld the state's uh, immigration enforcement law, which by uh, many judgments is the most far-reaching in the country. It would not have been necessary to address this problem if the federal government would have done its job and enforced the laws dealing with this problem. In Alabama, you know, in the Hispanic neighborhoods, there's nothing short of, of panic. Already effects have been seen in, in absences from schools, numbering into the hundreds, uh, absences from workplaces like farms and poultry plants, churches, you know, business districts that cater to mostly Hispanic clientele are pretty quiet. And uh, while the true effects of the law will not be known for some time, there is clearly some immediate effects that can be seen here in Alabama.